We're driving out to Long Island today because we found out there's a man out there who legally changed his name to Santa Claus. So, yeah. We're going to go interview Santa. It turns out this Santa's not so traditional. I drive a, a black Dodge pickup truck. With vanity plates. Oh, yes, I have vanity plates. It says Santa Slay. Before he was Santa, he was Frank. I was born in Brooklyn, but we lived here on Long Island. I've been married 23 years now. So how do you tell your wife that you're changing your name to Santa Claus? She said, as long as I don't have to change my name, go right ahead. Santa has been Santa for almost two decades, and he's good at it. I'm probably on, and this is not an exaggeration, thousands of refrigerators. He's got the laugh. <laughs> you know, that's, that's my Santa laugh. The suit. I designed my suit. But here are some other things about Santa that might surprise you. I have three tattoos on me of me. I'm very into zombies. I love barbecue. I have a smoker. It can fit 150 pounds of meat in. He's got this tiki hut, an above ground saltwater pool in his backyard. Yes, I'm that extreme when it comes to my idea of relaxation. So there's a little Frank left in there. But no question, he's fully committed to being Santa. I want to look like the poem says. I'm the most loved person on the planet. Everybody knows jolly old Saint Nick. He's the bearer of good tidings and cheer. Well, in Austria, he's not alone. And we don't mean Rudolph. These are Krampus, a sort of monster that travels with Saint Nick. They scare away bad spirits and look for naughty kids to punish, making Christmas a whole lot scarier. People in Europe have been welcoming the Christmas season by dressing as Krampus for hundreds of years. I am Ralph Herzog, and I am the oldest Krampus here in town Altenmarkt. On the 5th of December, we came to the child's in their homes, and the good one gets some sweets from the Nicolo, and the bad ones get hit with the whip from the Krampus. Then we go from house to house for five, six hours. And after we visited all the children in Altenmarkt, there's a little run with all Krampus together. The story of Saint Nick and Krampus goes back to 375 AD. And the costumes and traditions haven't changed much since. The dress from the Krampus is made of wool from the sheep. The masks are made of wood. And so when you're um, walking around to all the children, to their houses for some hours, you really will get sweat. It's a, like a workout. It's funny to go into the houses from the people. The reaction is different. Some childs are not scared, come to you and grab to their fur, and other ones screaming and running away. The Krampus is a good reason to change their minds from the children, try to be good for the next year. I am dressed as a Krampus this year the 15th time. I'm very lucky to go every year. I'm very proud to be a part of this old tradition. These Santas are all really kids at heart. They like the fun and laughter that comes with it and making people happy. That's why we're here. You ask them why they're Santa, most of them will tell you because they enjoyed being a child. So they're going back to that. They, they're reliving their childhood. It's a wonderful thing. Welcome everyone to the Charles W. Howard 80th Anniversary Santa Claus School. You better watch out, 
You better not cry. You better not cry. But I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. My name's Tom Valent. I'm the dean of the Charles W. Howard Santa Claus School in Midland, Michigan. This is the Harvard of Santa Schools. It's the oldest running Santa Claus school in the world. It was started by Charlie Howard in 1937. At Santa Claus School, we learn everything from beard keeping to personal hygiene. What we're gonna do, we're gonna start with the base. Same over here. To toy making, to what it feels like to ride on the Polar Express. <laughs> to flying the sleigh. Santa has to be healthy. He's a healthy outdoorsman. If you're not healthy, you're going to drift off. You're not going to pay attention. It's very important to have all the skills you can to be a great Santa because a child is going to remember this visit for the rest of your life. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. When Charlie had the school, he had three or four students in good years, maybe 15 students. This year, we have 214. It just grows. We have Santas, of course, from almost every state in the United States. We have around 20 Santas from Canada. We have three Santas from Denmark, one from Norway, and one from Germany. There's a real sense of camaraderie in this school. It's like this large Santa family coming together. They share stories, they learn from each other. We want to be Santas to make people happy. Well, when we get together, we're making each other happy. I love it. Once they leave this school, I hope that each and every Santa and Mrs. Claus goes out and spreads the spirit of Christmas, spreads the love and joy that we have here at this school, and passes it on to all the little children and all the families. When you give joy, you get it back twofold. you something. Aw, what is it? Come on, open it up. Oh, okay. Thanks. No, honestly, this little guy is a big deal in Catalonia. To explain why, we gotta head to Tuajuela de Montegri, a town in the Catalonia region of Spain, and to Barcelona a little later. But anyways, back to Tuajuela de Montegri, home to this man. No, 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 wait, this one. Hola, soy Sergio Alos y hago caganés. Cago what? Caganés. Cagané es una persona que está haciendo sus necesidades. A cagar. In English? At, at to shit. Bueno, un cagané es una pieza muy tradicional, muy, muy catalana. In Catalonia, when you put up your nativity scene, you have Mary, Joseph, of course, baby Jesus, some kings, and this guy. Yep, the Caganer. Tenemos que ir al siglo XVIII para encontrar eh, una explicación. El Cagané eh, hacía las necesidades en el campo por tal de fertilizar y abonar la, la tierra. O no tener el Cagané en el, en el Belén comportaba desventura, o sea, mala suerte. So, in someone's home, there he is in this museum. There he is. Whoa, there's even one in this street nativity scene. Okay, this is definitely not a joke. Can we now talk about your latest business idea? Uh, este es Marc, uh, mi hermano, y está en Barcelona uh, vendiendo ya todos los caganés. Desde que le pusimos cara a nuestros personajes, ¿no? con políticos, futbolistas, gente de la cultura, la demanda de Cagané nos fue subiendo. Al principio es un poco de incredulidad, ¿no? de qué es esto, ¿no? y después cuando leen un poquito la tradición, pues ya se lo miran de otra manera. Hay mucha gente que viene a comprar la colección y dice, mira, es que tengo un sitio en la pared del lavabo y que cuando voy me quiero sentir acompañado, ¿no? Eh, y, y se lo ponen en el lavabo. Sí, there you go. A gift for all year round.
I'm Jan Kingard, the CEO of King Size Bows Incorporated, and welcome to my bow kingdom. We're in the joy business. We make special occasions special. I have to say that our most popular bow is our signature monarch bow, the red and silver one. The Lexus commercials that we've had the privilege of doing for the last eight years has really drawn attention to the multi-loop bows. We're the only ones in the United States who actually make those bows. We make them out of a variety of fabrics and textures, and those are the ones that people are most interested in. There's a whole bow language that most people don't speak, but there are definitely differences of opinions about how many loops, how long the tails should be, and whether there's a V-cut or an angled cut. We are pleased to be in every showroom from Ferrari to the Mini to the Ford to BMW. Now we found that customers really expect to keep the bow when they buy the car. They want to drive away with the bow. You'd be surprised where people put bows. It's not just on top of a car. Any place that you want to say, look at me, look at me. It can be on a bicycle or a surfboard or skis, on a gate, on the top of your house at a pinnacle. We have six weeks to harvest a million Christmas trees. And that means you gotta move fast. As soon as harvest starts, it's time to call in the Calvary. The state of Oregon is the largest supplier of Christmas trees in the country. Here in Oregon, Christmas trees outnumber people 12 to 1. Holiday Tree Farms is one of the largest Christmas tree farms in the world. We have about 8,000 acres of actively growing trees. The only thing we grow is Christmas trees. We sell a million Christmas trees a year, but you got to remember, we harvest them in a very short period of time. We can cut and process a Christmas tree and have it loaded on a truck in less than 24 hours. The steps in harvesting a Christmas tree start with cutting each tree individually with a chainsaw. Slingers will pile the trees and rig them for extraction. Next, we bring a helicopter and fly them into waiting trucks. Each tree is shaken, baled, and loaded, and then it's on its way to market. Holiday started using helicopters in the early 1980s. They're a lot faster than doing it by hand. A helicopter can harvest about a thousand trees an hour. We normally run between five or six helicopters every day, sun up to sundown. We've been taking care of these trees ever since they were very tiny seedlings. An average noble fir is about eight years old when we harvest it and it's six to seven feet tall. Harvest is my favorite time of the year. That's when we get to see the payoff for six, seven, eight years worth of work. For every tree that we harvest, we plant another tree in its place. So when we harvest a million trees, we plant over a million trees the next spring. It never stops. So what do I think of fake trees as a Christmas tree farmer? They're our number one competition, obviously. We real tree farmers have a saying about fake trees. Nine years in the house and nine million years in the landfill. They cannot be recycled. It's Christmas, keep it real.